Hi guys, here it is, the fifth and final lesson of our match reporting project. Ash here. At the end of our last video, I promised to show you how to bring your match reports to life. So without further ado, I'm going to teleport now to the electric stadium and show you just how. Okay, so here we are. I'm in my virtual electric stadium because like I said, we're bringing our match reports to life. So what we're going to look at is five tips on how to add a little bit of spice, a little bit of excitement to your match report so that they're more interesting to read. So let's have a look first. The first tip is to remember the six W's. So these things in your match report are crucial to give the information that we want. So we want to know who, who's playing, who scored, who was involved, where, which stadium was the game at, um, what happened, obviously the key events of the game and when they happen, so get your timings right of the match. Um, we're also looking at how they happen, so go into detail, describe the goal, describe the, the tackle that got the red card, talk to us about it. And then the why, so why's could be um, if somebody was sent off, why were they sent off? If a, a referee made a specific decision, why do you think they made that decision? So you've got your six W's here, and a way that I've just put to remember them, W for Wayne Rooney, six W's, six Waynes, um, to make sure that you get all of the information you need. Um, and that's tip number one. So tip number two is to use some exciting vocabulary. So I'm going to use a bad example. The striker made a fast run past the slow defenders before scoring a good goal. Yeah. Okay, uh, I imagine as this guy, it's going to get a little bit boring after a while with such basic vocabulary. So we're going to have a little game. And if you need to at any point, pause and, and get involved. So we're going to look at substituting vocabulary, basic vocabulary out, a little bit more exciting advanced vocabulary in, as seen in this graphic here. We're subbing out the word good and we're bringing on the word superb. So let's have a look at some examples. So if we look at good, we're subbing out, we could use world-class, outstanding, or exceptional. Feel free to pause now and think of maybe three others that you could use instead of good. And then if we look at bad, I've got three words here. Um, in the match reporting lessons I do in schools in Cambridge, I know that the word abhorrent is a really popular word for some reason, people like to use that word. Um, ghastly, and could be used to describe um, a really bad challenge. A ghastly tackle caused a red card. Or dire, not Eric Dyer, not Ashley Dyer, but D-I-R-E, dire for something that's really, really bad. Again, pause it now if you want to find some, some more words. The word fast, you could use the word fast, or you might want to upgrade for rapid, hasty, or swift. Three words that maybe add a little bit more excitement than just plain fast. And likewise with slow, we've got the word laggard, another popular one in my match report lessons. Um, I like to remember the word laggard as lag, so hopefully this video won't lag as you're watching it. Um, leisurely, so a little bit relaxed, or one of my favourite words of all time, tortoise-like. So maybe you're describing a defender as tortoise-like when trying to keep up with the pacey striker. But look at hard, so if I think of hard as in like tough, um, we've got arduous, so we could use it as West Ham faced the arduous task of Liverpool away this weekend. We could have gruelling, or you could have problematic um, if parts of the game have been particularly difficult for certain players or teams. And the word strong, yeah, we can use the word strong to describe a player or an event, but we might use the word robust. Van Dijk is a robust centre-back. We might use formidable, the formidable pairing of Aubameyang and Lacazette. Or we might use powerful. The, the, struck, uh, the, the shot was struck so powerful it almost burst the back of the net. So we could use the strong. So that was the end of that tip. So tip number three is to be aware of overusing superstar words. So what I mean by that is it can be quite easy. I made the, this mistake when I was younger of just grabbing a thesaurus and finding the most interesting words that I could longest possible 
and just using them again and again and again and again. But if you use too many, it actually devalues your, your content. It makes it a little bit difficult to read. So I've got my subs bench words here. Sorry, Carius, but it was the only one I could think of to, to use as a subs bench player. We've got good, bad, fast, slow. First team words. So these are words that really hopefully should be featuring in your match reports, like superb, dreadful, rabid, uh, rapid or sluggish. And then we've got like superstar words. So for good, proficient, substandard, expeditious, laggard. If you put them all in a sentence, it sounds a little bit like this. Ronaldo proficiently rounded the laggard goalkeeper following an expeditious run beyond the substandard defenders. And then what we have is people reading it a little bit like Neuer here. Like, whoa. And then they might not want to read on. So try not to overuse your superstar words. Tip number four, getting a little bit technical in here, but it's important to add a little bit of detail and depth to your match reports. Try using relative clauses or expanded noun phrases to add a little bit of depth to your report. So a relative clause is um, a subordinate clause which adds detail to a noun. So a person, for example, within a sentence using who, whom, whose, which, or that. So what might happen as the example here, we'll have the nouns of the player, Salah, and then a comma, and then a small clause within that to add a little bit more detail. So if you look at the example here, Salah, who was today marking his 100th appearance for Reds, probably should say the Reds, scored a hat-trick to send Liverpool top of the league. So the relative clause is that bit that I've marked in the red box, who was today making his 100th appearance for the Reds. Just a little bit of extra detail to make it a little bit more exciting. And then for the expanded noun phrases, it's a phrase which has a noun and at least one adjective to describe it. So if we look at the example here up below, our noun, we've got three of them. We've got Harry Kane, the player, striker and feet are our nouns. And we've got the description in here. So Harry Kane and then our comma, a powerful striker with rapid feet managed to get onto the end of Son's cross to fire in the opening goal. So we've got the adjectives powerful and rapid used to describe them nouns, to expand it as an expanded noun phrase. So if you're not too sure on them, please free to, uh, feel free to watch it again, or maybe just do a little bit uh, more research or speak to your teachers about what those things are. But they're really, really important. They can add that little bit more detail and excitement to your report. And tip number five, Try not to make it personal. So the example I've got here, for somebody that maybe isn't a fan of Neymar, might write, Neymar missed a penalty. He is such a dreadful player. And even my nan could have saved his shot after his sluggish run towards the ball. First and foremost, we don't want to hurt Neymar's feelings. And we don't want to make our report too personal as we don't want people to think, oh, we can tell that this reporter supports that team or likes that player more or likes that player less. We've got to be factual. We've got to stick to what actually happened. And yeah, maybe your nan did save the penalty from Neymar, as my nan could do here as a goalkeeper, but we don't want to be upsetting players or hurting their feelings. So we don't want to make it personal. So a final recap on our five tips towards you becoming a... Ooh, proficient or outstanding match reporter. Remember the six W's so that your match report contains all of the correct information. Use exciting vocabulary, but beware of overusing ambitious vocabulary. You don't want to go too mad. Use relative clauses and expanded noun phrases to add a little bit more depth and detail to your report and don't make it personal. Follow those five tips and you're well on your way to becoming a champion match reporter. Hope you enjoyed that. So here it is, the final over to you challenge of the series. And what I want you to do today is to write a match report. And I've broken this up into five steps to completion. Step one, Choose any match you've watched or played in, whether it been in real life or on FIFA. Take the notes for the match using the tips from video one. Set up your match report structure with a picture that you've drawn or printed using the tips from video two. I want you to write your match report using today's five tips. 
and then send it to me at ashley.dyer at cambridge-united.co.uk and in doing so, I will give you two free tickets to report live in the stadium on a Cambridge United game in the future. And I'll be there with you and it'll be a lot of fun. I really hope that lots of people get in touch to send us their match reports so we can share them and invite you to a match in the future. So that's it, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the five lessons of match reporting. I hope you picked up a few tips and hints, and I hope you feel more excited about reporting on matches in the future. And I really, really hope that you get in touch because I'd love to see you at a game very, very soon. Take care, guys. See you soon.